Well guys, I'm back at it again. I'm going out for another three, possibly four days. Um, today is Tuesday the 14th. And I just left the trailhead. Unfortunately, I can't take the Ranger. I have to walk it. It's uh, 0.6 miles to the next trailhead. And then it's about three, well, just under three miles where I want to spike camp. And I decided that I'm not going to leave elk to go find elk. I'm going to go sort of close to the same spot as I was last week. But I'm going to approach it from the north. Is where all that elk activity was last week. I have till basically till Sunday morning, but I've only got three days of food and I'm expecting to find water about the halfway point. Hopefully I'll find water before that. I think I've got a little over three liters with me. I feel pretty good. My pack's a little heavy because of the extra day of food and then the extra two liters of water. I did put a couple pieces of clothing in because the temperatures have dropped about 10 degrees. Overnight lows I think are going to be low 50s, where last week they were upper 50s. Uh, daytime highs will probably be around right at the 80 mark. The sun is still intense. <laughs> The thermostat on my truck said, I think it was 68 degrees. It feels pretty good in the shade. Yeah, I've got about a three hour hike, maybe a little bit longer to where I want to go. And it's majority of it's going to be uphill, which really sucks. <laughs> but you got to go steep and deep. That's where the elk are. You go steep and deep for these deer. So. Crossing fingers, guys. Wish me luck. It's a new week. It is still muzzleloader season. I'm hoping that, that I get a chance to see a bull or a cow or something I'm babbling and I need to get hiking. So I'll check back with you guys in a little bit. pleasure of meeting two guys on the trail come down just a minute ago. One of them shot a bull this morning. He was a, he called him a raghorn. I call him a trophy. He was a little, looked like he was a, a little four by five. He had one side that was longer than the other, but he was so happy. And uh, he was giving me some pointers. And uh, they were actually killed in the spot that I'm going to. So that's even, that's even better news. I've seen like a couple cool guys. They're from Minnesota. And uh, we chatted for about 20 minutes. And uh, his buddy came down with another load. I think he said that was the last load of elk that they were bringing and they were going to go get them put on ice they still had to come back up to get their camp I think all together they were doing 12 miles of uh, packing out it sounds like a lot and it is a lot but I think it's all worth it I didn't want to film them it's, it's kind of I don't know Kind of rude, I guess. Congratulations, that guy. Hope that some of that good luck is contagious. staring at me it wasn't moving he was standing right here in front of the stump I didn't even notice that's a good sign she's right there 
saw a couple hikers back there who said they saw a buck. I wonder if that's the one. I'm trying to get a good get shot of your head. Oh, don't fall down the freaking hillside. Filming it here. Yep. It's pretty cool. Where are all your elk friends at? Okay, cool. Alright guys, I gotta get going. This is a good sign. This is a really good sign. You guys are carrying an elk out. And yes, that's water. Well, this was going to be my spot. I even sent the signal saying this is where I'm spike camping, but I think I'm going to have to move and I'll show you why. It is Spider Central. There is all kinds of them around here. And I don't feel like messing with spiders. Not that they bother me, but look at all this. Dead, dead wood. I mean, I don't want to get infested with spiders. This is like, this is like a sweet, sweet spot too. I mean, water's right here, you can hear it. 15, 20 steps away. Look at that. Look at this. That's a sweet little low spot right there. You collect water, wash my feet. Do you think it's gonna be cold? Oh yeah, I think it's gonna be very cold. <laughs> oh, that is icy. I thought for a moment we were gonna get some, some rain. I think it's, I think it's holding off till it gets past the mountains. Here we go. And a nice fire pit right here. Water, unfortunately, is down there. It's pretty steep. But it's a nice semi-flat spot. I probably I have one opening that way and one opening this way. Okay. Alright, I'm going to set up camp. I don't like that there are all these rocks here, 
but I do have a sleeping pad. So I want to get this set up before I get A, either sprinkled on or B, downpoured on. I'm going to be right up on this fire pit. I can't tell if that's thunder or planes. It's going on four o'clock. I don't know, sitting by this stream is beautiful and all, but I'm not gonna hear any elk bugling. It's getting darker up there behind me. Right in a rock. Sweet. I made it work, or I'm gonna make it work. I was able to find a, like the one only spot that wasn't a rock. I think it's gonna work out kind of cool. There's a couple rocks that are flat. I might be able to cook off of those dudes. So yeah, this is uh, this is tonight's tonight's camp. Guys, you'll never believe this. I'm here screaming bulls. Couldn't believe it, I was hearing them over the rushing water. They sound pretty far away. They must have started close and then they walked further down, but I slammed that beef stroganoff. I don't even remember tasting it. Got my, got my bow and my release and just kind of got on the other side of the creek here just to get that water rushing sound out. And I was right, I was hearing them, but they were much closer a little bit ago. I don't know if they winded me or they're just generally going down the ravine, which makes sense. It's like 5.30. I'm going to walk a little bit. I want to get an idea where they're at. Hello, oh, guys. I was right. There's at least two of them down there, and they're in that deep ravine that I sat at the other day. That sounds like they're way down there, close to the fields. Like they're, I can hear them, but they're so, they're very very faint. It sounds like they're on the other side of this this ridge top. I'll show you. It sounds like it sounds like they're over there, around this and way down. Yeah, they're screaming again. The wind is not good where I'm sitting. I do not hear any more bugles. Fortunately, they're either moved out so far I can't hear them or somebody took a shot and busted them all out. I hope it's not the latter. Anyway, I'm gonna walk back to camp and finish stuffing my belly <laughs> and filtering some water. never guess what happened. The Sawyer Squeeze got over squeezed. The Sawyer Squeeze got over squeezed. And apparently popped a hole right here along the seam. I'm gonna have to do first aid on my squeeze. Man, I knew I should have brought a second one and I did like the first half of this trip. And in light of <sighs> decreasing weight, well, I've got some tenacious tape. Unbelievable. I'm gonna do both sides just because it's separated right there. 
right there in that crease. So I'm gonna tape them up. Hopefully it works or I'm gonna have to hike back to the truck, which is gonna suck. Well guys, it is time to retire. Here's that man. Yeah, the uh, stream is right there by me. It's gonna be nice, nice to listen to. That's better. It's been a pretty interesting day. Talked to a bunch of people. Two guys, the one solo hiker, two other hikers, the mom and her kid. So those two mule deer, that was cool. Seeing animals, finally. And above all that, hearing that elk bugle right before I sat down to eat dinner. So I gotta hike back down to the truck and get a new bag, which really sucks. The, uh, the one guy who shot the elk, he, he was kind enough to fill up two of my bottles and he has a Ketadine pump style. And he says it's bomb proof. I think I might have to get one of those. Yep, and that's where I'm at. Without a spare and hiking to the truck tomorrow. Anyway, that's it for today. Had a pretty good day. Hopefully tomorrow is even more interesting. I'm not holding out any expectations or hopes or anything like that. I'm just here to have fun, get some experience and learn. Uh, maybe if I'm lucky, God willing, uh, some of the karma that <laughs> those two fellows are talking about goes my way. So, with that, good night, and I will see you tomorrow. Guys, I had a little mouse problem last night, apparently. The mouse got into my pink lemonade. Actually, this is strawberry lemonade. Look at that A little punk. Got my BCA. And then you got this Ignite. This is the pink lemonade. <sighs> Didn't touch the coffee though. Yeah, I can't tell if there is or doesn't look like there's a hole on the breakfast skillet. Interesting. Well, it is super, super chilly. I'm not gonna say cold, but it's pretty dang cold, and my beard is atrocious. I woke up a little later than I wanted to. Um, toss and turn last night, it got really cold. I had to throw on, I had to throw on my bottoms, and I also put on, I also grabbed that sleeping liner. I had my down socks on, long johns, a t-shirt, these gloves, this hat, a sleeping liner and a down blanket, and I was still cold last night. The alarm went off and I shut it off promptly. And uh, now it's about 6.30, going on seven. I don't hear any bugles. Not yet, so I'm going to try and hurry up and get this breakfast in me and head on over there. Anyway, check back with you guys in a little bit. Alright guys, it's 7.30. Just finished breakfast. Lockdown camp. We're going to jet over there to that other ridge. In hopes to find a bugling bull. Chili. I got two and a half liters of water in here and I've stripped down pretty much everything. I think all I have in here is toilet paper, first aid, and my kill kit. And then whatever I have in my pockets. Alright, let's go. Good morning. Hi. Sorry to bother you. I'm just passing through. Little muleys, little muley does. There's two does. The other one might have been a spike.
Well guys, as you can tell, I'm back at camp, rocking the box and cracks. I'm gonna just uh, grab some snacks, rehydrate, take a little bit of a break, and then head down the trail. I, I gotta have water. This is stupid. Uh, I'm not sure when I'll turn the camera back on, but uh, you will be the first to find out. <laughs> See you in a little while. Back at the tent. Oh man, that took forever. Oh, oh, it's quarter to four now. It took me two hours to get back up here and about an hour to get down there. Over three hours just making that trek for some freaking filter bags. My feet are killing me. I kind of rushed it going downhill and I think I paid the price. So I think I'm going to have an early dinner and filter on ton of water and then uh, hopefully still have a little bit of time to do some walking around and listening and maybe um, just maybe anyway all right guys no more messing around I've got eight liters got two liters in the pack three four and that is a four liter water cell eight liters of filtered water this is about a liter of a little over a liter there's the two liter mark so I'd say a little over a liter of unfiltered. Guys, all right, it's about six o'clock. Got a belly full of food, feeling good. Drink a ton of water, filtered a ton of water. Got my stuff on. Hopefully there's some people going over here. I'm gonna go ahead and knock an arrow, just in case. Here's the strat. Long John's on, socks. Plus, down socks. Inside a 
sleeping bag liner inside a down quilt. <laughs> so on top, I've got my merino wool book beanie. I've got my merino wool t-shirt and my merino wool gloves. That's what I had on last night and I, it was a little bit cold. Uh, doesn't help that I'm by a stream, but it is very peaceful to listen to. It's a little after 8 o'clock. I'm uh, pretty exhausted. I think I'm just going to hit the bed and uh, set the alarm clock for pretty early. I think I did uh, for like 4.30 or something like that. I'll have to double check. Get up, have breakfast, and then um, shoot on over there to that ridge. Hopefully hear some beagles. If not, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do just yet. I may have to still hunt. I'm not a big fan of that, but it does work. Anyway, good night guys. And I will see you tomorrow. It is 4.30 in the morning. I think I'm hearing bugles, but again, I'm not getting my hopes up. Because it could just be the water. <sighs> i got to get some food in me and hike over to this ridge. So, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Well, hey guys. I don't know if you can see me very well, but it's about 10 till 6. I'm facing east right now. I'm just sitting here waiting to hear some bugles or waiting for the sun to come up and to make my move. Pretty early. Up in the mountains. It's pretty sweet.
guys, a little update. It's nine o'clock. I'm at uh, 10,000, roughly 10,500 feet. Lots of trails up here. No fresh scat or tracks. I popped up on the top of this ridge here to see it was on the north side of this. And it's like straight down. I'm not hearing any bugles. I'm gonna have a little snack, drink some water. I don't know if I'm gonna keep going up this ridge or, or what I'm gonna do, but it's pretty beautiful up here. It's 10,500 feet, folks. I couldn't even tell you what the peak of that mountain is. It's up there. Let's go take a look on the other side of this ridge top. A beautiful day. If you're wondering, my camp is way, way down there. Way down there. Very pretty. Very pretty. bed and some old poop. A couple beds in here. Almost at 10-6. Alright guys, I got a question for you. I want to know what you think did this. You know elk doing that. Sasquatch maybe. Other humans, most likely. Let me know what you think. Just an odd spot to put rocks on rocks on rocks. Here's some more stacked rocks. Alright guys, I've gone as far as I can go. It's pretty vertical. But if I go any higher, I'm going to run into rock cliffs. I'm going to descend a little bit and then I'm going to go pretty much straight down the side of this hill to about 10.6, maybe 10.5. It's about 10 o'clock. It's still pretty early, but I was hoping that I could ride this contour all the way back to the creek, but it's not looking like that's the case. It's going to be treacherous. It's super thick. So I will see you guys in a little bit. Thank you. 
side where I get him or where I think I am. It looked like there's blood coming down, but I couldn't tell. It didn't look, look red. He was in the shadows. I'm just keeping an eye on where he stood. He's not responding to any calls.
there's not a lot of blood. Here, blood here on the rocks. Blood on that rock. Blood on that rock right by the base of that tree. There's blood right here. Looks like he stopped. Yeah. It looks like about shoulder high. I don't know, maybe lower. point with the stacked rocks. I'll show you some of the blood. There's some there. There's some splattered on that. There's some... Can you see it? Some right there. And if you look all the way over there, there's a sapling in the sunlight. So I'm just going to sit here for a little while. I have this fear that I'm bumping him because I have not found him bedded yet. He's just been moving. Part of me wants to back out. Anyway, I'll check back with you in a little bit. Well guys, I hate to say it, but I did not track down that elk. But I am not giving up. I shot him at noon, and I blood trailed him till 4.30. Now that sounds like a long time, which it is, but I only went 500 yards. I waited a long time to start with. I waited in between and I took my time walking very slowly. I don't know what to think right now. I have a lot of um, mixed emotions. I stopped at 430 because I heard a twig break pretty close to where I was and I thought could be him and he might have been bedding down. So I thought let's just give him overnight. Hopefully the wolves, coyotes, whatever doesn't get to him. I feel really, really blessed to have that opportunity to actually pull back, shoot at this elk. I keep replaying it in my mind. It looked a little high, but it was right behind the shoulder. I know this because I remember before I shot, he had a clean side. After I shot, he moved to a window and I saw a little stripe going down his side, right behind his shoulder, a little little high. Found a lot of good blood, a lot of dark blood. It looked like there was a handful of times where he coughed up. So I backed out. Called Aaron. He's going to be pretty much on standby tomorrow morning. As I was talking to Aaron, I heard something, some twigs break behind me. It was a guy coming off the hillside. He was muzzle loading, and uh, he had said that he came from the top. He said he found my the blood trail, but he followed it the opposite direction. So I'm going to probably not sleep tonight. It's going to suck. The gentleman did tell me about 
a handful of wallows. So he pointed those out to me. I haven't seen a single wallow or a tree rub, but he said that there's a handful of wallows up there. There's a spring. Typically when, when, when animals are wounded, they'll go to water. So hopefully, hopefully that guy didn't just bust them. I hope that God blesses me and then I'm able to find that bull tomorrow. And even if I don't, it was pretty exciting. Really neat experience. And the whole adventure has been really fun. It's been awesome. I've been having a blast and been wanting to do something like this forever. And it's been worth every minute. <laughs> every painstaking part of it. <laughs> all the hiking, all the up and down, all the loads. The giant 60 pound pack on my back and filtering water and all that jazz. It's been just a hell of a time. One last thing. Check out this moon. But it's over it's over half now and it's super bright. Uh, other than that, I will check back with you guys in the morning. Towards the end there, the time that I made the decision to stop tracking the blood, I started to get this. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, that's gonna stick. Good morning guys. It's Friday, the seventeenth of September, twenty twenty one. 6 o'clock in the morning. I did not sleep very well last night. You know, like I said last night, having just real mixed emotions about this, this bull and if I'm going to be able to find him or not. And on top of it, I only have a breakfast meal and um, a bunch of snack food in my battery pack. I don't think it's going to make it. I'm basically running out of food and time in a way. I'm trying to stay positive and plan my day. I still have tomorrow. I still have today. I have Saturday a full day, a Sunday a full day. But I don't have any food here at Spike Camp, so I have to go back down to the truck to get food. The clear plan is to go find this bull, and if I don't find him, come back to camp, get some more food, continue hunting. I'm crossing my fingers and my arms, hoping that I can find this bull and make this a successful trip with a couple extra days here in Colorado. So anyway, my stomach's growling. I'm going to get uh, some breakfast going and get motivated. I left camp about 7 o'clock. It's 8.30 now. I'm actually right at last blood. There's a marker. Blood on there. And there's my head. I'll go over there and continue tracking. I'll give you guys an update whenever I can. On his first bed. I've been walking for about an hour, very slow. He's still nice drops of blood, pretty decent size. Tell me what you think. So, there's a lot of blood right there. It's coagulated. There's a lot of blood right there. I don't know, the fact that he got up does not make me feel good. But, I'm still gonna keep looking. Alright okay, guys, here's an update. It's uh, 10.30. I think I found a second bed, maybe a uh, just a stopping point, but there's quite a bit of blood here. He's for some reason he's circling back, just lower elevation. So tell me what you think. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna keep tracking. Guys, how come without wallows? It looks like he had it too. One of them, and I figured out which one. If he washed himself off, I guess that would mean he would keep bleeding some more, or would stop the bleeding, I don't know. I haven't seen blood in the last 10 yards. He did have to hop over a, a big log, so maybe he ran down here. I don't know. I gotta keep looking. Oh, guys, he might have passed the wallows for some reason and came down to this creek. This is right there. Where's my boot? I think there's some more down there, but I can't. I can't really tell just yet. This is it's an intermittent creek. I've almost covered this whole bowl. Or he has almost covered this whole bowl, I should say. I am getting closer to ravens. And I'm told they usually can identify or at least tell you where a kill is. Time to go down in this creek and see what happens. Guys, listen to these ravens. These things are crazy. I just wanted to show you this. 
second time he's taken me across a bunch of rocks. I don't know if he's running. It looks like he is. I mean, this, I don't know how he's still living with all this blood that he's lost. And it just goes all the way up there to that log. That log right there. So I just walked. So I just walked all the way over here. And there's a lot of, a lot of splatter. And it looks like he stopped right here to try and decide which way he wanted to go. But it looks like he ultimately he hopped over this big ass tree and there's the next blood. I'm back and heavy. I'm starting to get another headache. I've been trying to eat more and unfortunately I think I did not bring enough water. I brought three liters, and I don't know if I'm going to have enough. It's now, I think, going on 2 p.m. This is the longest I've ever had to track an animal. It doesn't feel good. Well, guys, you can see I'm back at camp with a sad face and a uh, broken spirit, broken body, broken pretty much everything. I don't know how, but his blood trail went cold. I'm not one to give up kind of beside myself and I'm kind of questioning everything so far. Almost seven o'clock. Um, I trailed his track over nine hours today and Ed, uh, I guess it was four and a half hours from yesterday. So you're looking at, you know, 13, 13 plus hours. I can't even do math. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 and a half plus hours. As you fellow hunters out there know, it's not a quick thing. So I'm pretty beat up right now. Um, like I said, spiritually, emotionally, physically. Uh, my cousin Aaron was just here. Thank you, Aaron, for, for coming out here and, and getting me Subway for tomorrow morning because I'm out of food. He's going to car camp tonight. And then in the morning, he's going to meet me here, and then we're going to pull out all the stops. I need another set of eyes to help me look for this, to help me pick up the blood trail again. I'm not giving up. I am, I am having some doubts, though. A lot of the blood that I found, just he should, I don't know about elk though, he should be dead by now and I should have found him. He was bleeding a lot. As you guys can see in the video, there is a lot of blood loss from this bull. But I don't know bulls that well. Maybe this is like a flesh wound and he's going to walk it off. I'm going to eat a little bit and I'm going to fill up on water and then I'm going to try and get some sleep. And then in the morning... Aaron and I are going to go look for him, and then if we don't find him, then I guess that's it. I guess, um, yeah, I guess that's it. Well, guys, it's, uh, it's a very sad day. I cannot find my elk. The blood, the blood trail went cold. Aaron and I spent most of the morning on my third attempt to look for him. I'm thinking he either got spooked by something because he immediately, he made an immediate left turn and looked like he went into this, this big ass meadow. We scoured that meadow up and down, left and right, all around it. Every exit, every entrance, retracing steps, and we could not find a single drop of blood. This is uh, day three of looking for my bull. And uh, I guess at this point, I hope that he's alive and he's gonna make it. Aaron and I split up and then I went another direction. That direction was pretty much straight up a hill to a wallow that a couple local guys told me to go check. Um, one guy this morning told me he found a dead elk up there and uh, he thinks it was a bull. He also mentioned that last night, his friend saw a, uh, a guy leaving with uh, just the head of an elk. And it was a pretty deep chocolate, chocolate horned elk, just like mine. I don't know if that's the case or not. Could be any elk. So I had to come all the way up here to find out. And I'm actually standing right next to an elk, a dead carcass of an elk. Uh, I'm not going to show it. It doesn't look like mine. It looks like it's been here. Plus this looks like it could be a cow. The problem is, it's missing the head. Partially, I see one ear, and where a horn would come out is, it's not there, it's non-existent. Pretty much from the ear, that's all that's left is just the ear. There's, 
body parts everywhere and it doesn't smell very good so i'm uh i'm having a rough uh rough day life goes on it's just how it goes unfortunately it went the, the way i didn't want it to go this time around i don't know what i can do um i feel like i pretty much did everything right maybe it was just pushed too hard and it's uh in the next county right now i definitely feel like this is not my bowl it's actually laying on the side that I can see where my shot would have gone in and what's left of the fur. There's no evidence of my shot. I gotta get out of here. This stinks on so many levels. If you guys watched till the end, I really, really appreciate it. I'm sorry I didn't get to show a bull down or um, at the celebration like I wanted. But again, I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next time.